Good morning everybody, it's um, February 20 today. My name's Ethan, uh, so this is my family's farm. And we're currently spreading the daily load of manure. Today we are gonna pick up big square bales from a neighbor. We're buying a bunch because we're running low on feed. And then we're also gonna cut up a bunch of firewood. So the only problem is this tractor is currently having problems. It's got an injector knock to it. And it also, it's going to whine in a minute because it's a little low on hydraulic oil. I need to top that up before we leave today. But today's job is so practically just going to be chopping firewood. Or what I'm going to film today, I should say. It's just going to be chopping firewood and then hauling big square bales home. All right, we got the manure spreader unhooked now. Time to fuel up with diesel and time to top off hydraulic oil. All right, so since we've had injector problems, we've been running diesel conditioner. So I've got 100 milliliters of that here. Just gonna dump it in the tank. Now we're gonna fuel it up. So, 100 milliliters of that uh, diesel fuel conditioner is supposed to do 227 liters of diesel. And this tank is pretty much empty and it holds just over 200 liters. So, that's how we measure it. We just let it run till empty and add a little more each time. Alright, we got a full tank. Spilled a little bit, but that's okay. So we got a full tank of diesel. Takes a little while for the gauge to get up to full, but. All right, now we're gonna go and hook up the bail wagon. We've been getting lots of rain, so that's why everything's a little bit muddy. So we're gonna hook up bail wagon like I was saying, and then it's, I think 12 o'clock now. We're supposed to be there by 1.30. So then we're gonna go have breakfast, lunch, I guess brunch. And then we will go pick up our big square bales. All right, we got our wagon hooked up now. It's after breakfast in our tractor. They're both ready to go. Um, yeah, dad's starting to cut firewood now and I'm gonna pick up a load of bales. It's gonna take us, I think it will take us half an hour to get there, at least that's what I'm planning on it taking us. So we're gonna leave now to be there by 1.30. Um, I gotta do a school project on, well, it's an instructable thing. So I'm gonna pretty much for the project, I'm gonna do how to drive John Deere 7420. So the next clip is just going to be me explaining that. Alright, this is a John Deere 7420. I'm going to teach you guys how to drive it. So, here's how you open the door. You push this button in. Door opens. Climb up these three steps. Uh, just a quick note. If you haven't driven a manual before, you will struggle to do this. But it's possible to learn. It's just nice if you know how to do it. So that's how you set the door. There's this lever here. You're gonna use that to tilt the steering wheel down to the desired position. So for me, it's right there. I'm gonna turn the key one notch. You're gonna look on the dash, a little bit dusty. It's gonna say start. So when it says start, you turn the key. There are I guess four pedals on the floor. This is your clutch. This one's your left brake, right brake, and your gas. So, um, that's your controls on the floor. You have a left hand forward reverse. And then you got 20 forward gears and 20 reverse gears. So you got A gear, B, C, D, E. And then in each one, you have, um, you got 40, not four, you got four, sorry, gears in which way you're going. 
So I can upshift by pressing this button or this button and I can downshift by pushing this button or this button. So the reading on the dash will tell you what gear you're in. So one, two, three, four. Well, that's how you do it. So without further ado, I'll show you how to go forwards in first gear. So what you're gonna do to go forwards in first gear is you're gonna push in the clutch. You're gonna put your foot on the brake. This, I like to couple the brakes when I go down the road, so I'm gonna do that. Just put them together so you don't accidentally hit one. You're gonna remove the tractor from park, put it in a neutral. You're gonna push the tractor into A, and you're gonna see you're in A1. You're gonna put this lever forward and slowly release the clutch. You're now moving forward. Since you wanna go faster, you hit the rabbit button. One, two, three. So, started in A1, now we're in A4. Now I wanna go a little faster yet. So I'm gonna go down to B1. So I'm in B4. But before I release the clutch, I'm gonna go down to B1, two, three, and four. So now we're in B4. We start giving it a little bit of throttle now. So this is B4. Um, if I want to go a little bit faster yet, you got a clutch in between, so I'm going to clutch again. That's A. I'm going to go down to A. Right. Sorry, my bad. That is C1 we're in. Once again, you got to push that button down a bunch of times to get it. So now that we've done that, we're in C1. And then if you want to go faster, you hit that rabbit button again, so C2. C3, C4. Now, we're gonna go on the road and we're gonna learn some of the faster gears. So, we're in C4. I did downshift there, but we're back in C4. I'll teach you guys how to downshift later. We're going into D1. You don't have to push the downshift. Like, you don't have to go back to um, number one, when you shift, you just have to, like, go from C to D. It's hard to explain, but it's, this is one of those things I can explain, but it's easier to learn to do by doing. So, once you're in D, what I did was I hit all the buttons to go to D4. Then, at this point, you're going to want to do what you do with any manual car. You're going to want to keep pushing the gas down. So, we're at 1500 RPM. Now, you're going to want to go to E. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to start off in second gear. There's a computer that controls the transmission to let it know what gear to start in. So E2 to E3, you hit the rabbit button. Then E3 to E4, you hit the rabbit button. And then the rest of your speed is just RPMs. So you just essentially floor it, and then you'll get up to 40k an hour. So that is how you drive. Okay, so, like I was saying, once you're in E4, to get to your top speed, 40k an hour, you're just gonna floor it. It's gonna go to around 2,250 RPMs, or 26 miles per hour. So, this is your top speed. If you want to downshift, you gotta push the turtle button. But first you gotta release the gas, so you slowly release the gas, and then you push the rabbit button, then you increase RPMs again to match so it's not such a rough shift. And then, yeah, to get back down, that's what you do. So anytime you go from a range from A to B, or B to C, you got a clutch, but anytime you're shifting between one, two, three, and four. You don't have to clutch. And then, anytime you're going to go to a complete stop, you gotta hit the clutch and brake. So, it's a little bit tricky to explain, but if you were to hop in a tractor and do it for yourself, it would make sense. So, that's how you drive, it's on to your 7420. 
So, when you're in E1, you can start off. You just gotta rev it a little bit and slowly release the clutch. So you don't always have to start off in A1. You can start off in any gear as long as it's done correctly. So when I'm on the road like this, I'll primarily stay in E range. And then this thing gets up to 40k an hour pretty quick when it's not pulling anything. Well, we are pulling the trailer, but yeah, this to note that you don't always have to start off in A1 when you're driving this thing, in case you didn't know that. Alright, so I figured I'd do a quick clip on how to stop. So when you're driving forward, doesn't matter what gear you're in, you can stop in any gear as long as you do it right. So once you get to the place you want to stop, you push in the clutch and you push in the brake. And once the tractor's completely stopped, so once that gauge says 0, 0.0 miles per hour, you're gonna bring this thing, you're gonna put it back in this middle slot, not there, not there, back in the middle slot. And you're gonna take this, you're gonna pull it down, it's gonna wobble, you're gonna slide it down, you're gonna put it in the park. Then you release the clutch and the brake. And then if you're ready to park it, you can set off the tractor like this. Then you put the steering wheel back up, and then to open the door, you pull this thing in, just like that. Then you open the door, you climb out, and you set it behind you. Alright, so that was my instructable thing for school, pretty much just how to demonstrate how to do a basic task so obviously if you're gonna try to do that task you got to have a little bit of knowledge you got to know how to properly shift gears and clutch but that's how uh, John Deere power quad five-speed works so Anyway, we are on our way to pick up loads of bales. Like I was saying, I think we fit 18 on a wagon. So, it's really nice having a 40k an hour transmission in this tractor. It just makes it really fast to get anywhere. So, I'm actually surprised. We bought this tractor practically brand new. It was a snow plowing tractor before. So that's why if you look at it, it's got a little bit of rust on the rims, but it's got just under 5,000 hours on it now, and it's been pretty reliable other than the injectors are starting to go, so, yeah. But the road gear is definitely a nice extra that this tractor had. There's Dad over there working in all the working with all the branches. He took the gator down there because it's very muddy. So I actually got, I can't show you it, but I got a Bluetooth transponder. Well, I can't show you it. I can't show you a plane hooked into this thing, that little gadget down there. That way my phone can connect to that radio. So now we have Bluetooth radio in this tractor. It's really nice, but obviously I can't play any music or anything, otherwise we get copyright strikes, and those aren't very good. I haven't had any of them yet, but uh, the goal isn't to get any of them. So, yeah, like I was saying, we bought this tractor, I think it had 200 hours on it. It was a demo unit, and it pushed snow, so we've owned it for, I guess, since 2005, so... 17 years this will be the 18th year of owning it so all right we got a full load now 18 big square bales you're all flipping 18 big square bales um i do apologize this camera on this way it's blurry that's just because the lens actually broke 
so that's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Alright, so I just stopped recording there, just passed, um, family going out for a walk, and I always love seeing how excited, uh, country kids get, and even I used to be exactly like this, just seeing a tractor, you know, they all get so happy. But, 18 big square bales we're going to take home. Uh, last time we did this during a snowstorm, there's a YouTube video on that. I think it took me like, just under a two hour round trip. I think this one we're going to be able to do it in an hour round trip. We'll have to see though um, how quick I'd actually get it done. But I think that's what it'll be, around an hour long trip depending how fast I drive on the way back but right now we're cruising at 18 miles per hour but there's a few of the bales that I've started to notice they aren't moving but they just weren't on there perfect quite as smooth but yeah I'll be excited to hear this thing work on some of the hills on the way home um, maybe I'll open up a window so you guys can hear it but nice I really like this tractor oh, it's our only cab tractor we got but it's just a great tractor and it's been reliable for us I also really love how this looking I'm not sure if you guys have been paying attention but all the uh, country scenery you get all the old bank barns we got around here and all the old barns it's really cool to see all that even just like to the left here you can see just the stone people use it's it's amazing it's really cool just to see so we got a little bit of a hill coming up camera doesn't do it justice but it'll be exciting to hear this tractor work so sounds really good though just chugging along I have that side window open that's why you hear it so much so, this tractor sounds really nice in between a thousand and fifteen hundred rpm and then once you get higher than that it doesn't really sound as nice in my opinion but yeah like I was saying we got a uh, it's not a massive hill by any means if you go online and look, but a little bit of a hill. There aren't many hills uh, here, but when there are, it's pretty exciting to see them. So. But, yeah. There aren't many gravel roads around here, if you haven't noticed. Uh, we were driving on a gravel road a minute ago, but, um... This road I'm driving on is the county line road. Um, so any road going left from here won't be paved, or it will be paved, but any road going that way, there's a possibility that it won't be. So. Anyway, I'll just let you guys hear the engine work now. now that we're up that hill now we got to go back down the next hill so down's a little bit steeper but you can hear it engine braking anyway actually really nice just to hear this track to work in my opinion but each there oh not everybody likes to hear them and I don't have the windows open all the time but um so if you hadn't figured out though we did buy big square 
dry hay bales. Uh, we're gonna feed those to our close-up dry cows and our smallest, youngest pen in the heifer barn. Our, I call them the babies, but um, all of them are actually already a year old by the time they get to that pen. All right, so we've made it home now. As you can see, this is what I was talking about, how these bales aren't fully in the wagon. But we have made it home with all 18 bales, so it doesn't matter. And once again, these, I think these two are sliding around a little bit, but yeah. I knew these were ready out, but it actually it takes a lot to um, move all these bales because each one of these bales, there's 18 of them, weigh 850 pounds a piece. And then, um, yeah, I guess I think we're pretty close to 35, 40,000 pounds because tractor weighs around 17,000 pounds. Then the wagon, I'm not sure what that weighs. Quite a bit of weight, I think a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds, and then each bale is 800 to 850 pounds, and there's 18 of them, so that's pretty close to 35,000. I noticed it just happened in the last little bit on the way home, the safety chain came undone, but yeah, anyway, we're home, dad. Um, just texted me though and said the chainsaw broke so he didn't actually get too far in the past hour cutting wood all right so we got the chainsaw fixed for dad um the exhaust manifold fell off it cracked so i got a photo of it uh not off but fixed so i'll put that up on the screen here probably like right there or something so we looked after that unload those big square bales, so we unload them in the back of our dry shed. Then I'm gonna scoop up loose stuff and feed that to the babies in the heifer barn. We also got a measure, I just did. It's 10, I think it's no, 12 paces we need, like a pace, one end of the boot to the other. That's how much width we'd need for, here I'll show you, it'll make more sense, but to feed bales in the heifer barn and drive by with the chopper because we're gonna switch up how we feed stuff in here again we're just gonna put dry hay bales we also got to chop but we're gonna put dry hay bales in here to the close-up cows and to the babies but then we still got to drive by for the breeding pen so we're gonna paste it at one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, it is possible. I think we'd have to be pretty good at backing up. I think we're gonna try it just with one bale and see what's the worst that could happen. But first, we're gonna push up all the hay in this heifer barn. This morning, they had quite a bit left, but now it's four hours later and they've eaten a lot. So, Alright, so Indy and I, we got a loose big square bale here from what we were feeding the calves in the back of the dry shed, but since we need more room in there for more bales, we're going to scoop this up and feed it to these, what I call, baby calves, the year old calves in the heifer barn. So I'm just going to pull them out flake by flake, because that's how big squares are made, and feed them. All right, so we've gotten the back of the dry shed cleaned out for more big square bales. We're still gonna have to park the straw chopper back in here, but we've got everything all set up to start unloading big square bales, so that's what we're gonna do now. All right, we've got all of our hay unloaded. All the bales are stacked up. So I think there's, um, I think we almost got 20, Eight bales in here is the count. 26 bales. 26, I believe. So, we've got that wagon unloaded. We are going to feed that top bale today. And then that bale will probably get put out here to feed to 
these calves here. But yeah, there's a lot of hay here. Stack on this side isn't perfect. Same with the other side, but it's packed tight. There's a gap there, I guess, but I'll push that in. But that bale is probably going to get fed today as well. So we've gotten the winter spreader hooked back up and the bale wagon unhooked. We're going to start night milking and night feeding now. So this is going to be the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, leave a comment, leave a like. Um, subscribe if you haven't, maybe, or whatever you want. Anyway, God bless. Have a good day. Wherever you're from, I'm watching. Peace.